Welcome to another edition of Mine Up Matters here on the Dakotan and brought to you by Shock Safe and Lock. I'm Jonathan Starr. Today I'm joined by Mike Blessum, who is an appointee to the Human Relations Committee, the ad hoc committee now um, for the city of Minot. Um, so first off, thank you for joining us today, Mike. Yeah, good to see you, Jonathan. So the Human Relations Committee ordinance, obviously there's a lot of history on this of when it was first put in place back in the 1900s, in the 1970s. Um, and then more recently, beginning earlier this year, there was just a attempt to get this back in place and it was going subtly fine. And then suddenly people realized what was going on. I believe you're one of the advocates that were at the meetings pushing for one side or the other. Um, what was your, the reason why you got interested in this, uh, ordinance being reinstated? Right. Well, you know, if you look at, if you look at the ordinance, it was, it was brought in the seventies when many, many ordinances like that across the country were brought, um, part of the civil rights movement, part of making sure that people weren't being discriminated against in the days where there was, there was real discrimination still going on. Right. And, you know, so there was a reason for the ordinance. Originally, there was a reason for the committee. Um, you know, the fact that it was being brought forward again now, um, in my opinion, had a, had a very specific agenda attached. Right. Um, and that agenda was to bring uh, an anti-discrimination ordinance to the city, which has happened in Fargo and Grand Forks. There's there's other cities nearby that have taken that step. Um, and really what, what that's meant to do is it's meant to, to, in the proponent's eyes, it's meant to bring us up to the times with with LGBTQ issues, with other with other um, I guess oppressed groups in their minds, and trying right. to pull that into this century and into into this decade um, in their minds to try to make sure that that people aren't being discriminated against. And I think you know I think we can all agree that we don't want discrimination happening. Absolutely, I think, I think that is what we want. The real question is 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 this is this the path to to make that happen? Right. Should the government be involved? So this gets, there's a second reading. There's almost an expectation that it's just going to be approved on second reading, but there was a, the, really the uh, new city council chambers, it was like one of the first meetings there and it was overlooked because it was full of people that were wanting to state their view on the issue, which was great. It was city government working all right with the citizens showing up. Um, then it kind of dragged out. They went and they, there wasn't a city council member present, so they went and stated how they once voted on something way back when, and it made one of the council members upset, and so they were going to go and push this till the next meeting, and, and it would be taken care of then. Next meeting shows up, and again, it, somebody wasn't present. People no-showed, people were gone for family vacations, trips, whatever it was. What was kind of your viewpoint of that? It, it really felt, from our perspective, that it was just being intentionally drug out. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know that I would go quite that far. I don't think that they were intentionally dragging it out, but I do think they were being overly sensitive to the members being gone. Um, you know, really any any elected body, any deliberative body for that matter, if you're on a board for a, a nonprofit, in your bylaws or in your charter, there's always uh, there's always a quorum number. There's always a, <clears throat> a number by which you can move forward with any business of that, of that body. Um, the city council at every single one of those meetings had a quorum. They could have right. taken it up and finished the job at any at any one of those. Um, so I, I don't I don't fault them necessarily for um, for being sensitive to a, a missing member. I mean, certainly you want you want input from everybody on those things. At the same time, though, I think they unnecessarily drug this out in terms of the the people who were who felt strongly about it on either side really had to keep showing up again and, and keep voicing those opinions and and really keep showing the council that this mattered um, in both directions. And I, I just, I don't think that, that that served us well as a city. I think there's that there's those that would say, you know, more deliberation is always good. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I think, yeah. I think that we elect our council members to take care of a job and they need to take care of that job efficiently and, and let us and themselves get back to the business of the city. Right. In this specific case, the deliberation <clears throat> made it in some ways become personal. Um, initially you had people stating facts and then, and then you had people showing up, seeing the same people over and over And it. It did create a weird vibe, uh, as the me meetings continued to carry out. Um, finally it came to an end when, uh, council member Pittner put forth a motion that was going to establish a seven member committee, which was not what was originally in place. And it was supposed to be co-chaired by Lisa Olson and Carrie Evans, uh, according to his motion. Um, and that was later changed as well. Uh, with Scott Burlingham uh, being one of the co-chairs instead of Kerry Evans. Um, were you excited when that motion came forth, or was that something that you weren't really... 
No, you know, at the at the exact time when that was going on, um, there was competing motions that um, that were being worked through. So Lisa Olson had a, a motion that would have returned to the original language and and spun up the right. committee. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think under the under the law, that probably was the right path um, if if that was your intent. Um, you know, at the same time, Carrie Evans had brought this for a reason. She had a point of view on, on what she's looking for and, and why she wanted to adjust the language in the ordinance in the first place. And so those, I, I think there was, there was some turmoil going back and forth on the council about the fact that they weren't actually voting on that. Mm -hmm. Um, they were, they were really working with Lisa's motion. Um, eventually, as you mentioned, Councilman Pittner, um, I don't know any other way to put it. He essentially threw out an ultimatum to the rest of the group and said, right. I won't vote for anything other than what I'm about to say. Yeah. And that's what he said is he said he wanted a committee with, with one member appointed by each of the council members and the mayor um, co-chaired by Lisa Olson and Carrie Evans. And that, that was the only thing that he was willing to vote for. Um, you know, when we get talking about the first um, HRC meeting here in a little bit, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, what that means under the law, because that's really the context where that shows up. But in terms of what that actually meant, you know, I, on things like this, a lot of times I'll come, I'll give some testimony, I'll talk to the council, I have a per perspective or a point of view that I... Right. Not that it's it's the right one all the time, but that I, that I want to bring them. There was others that brought perspective as well. And one perspective I thought that was <clears throat> really important was one that was brought on behalf of Jim Olson. You know, everybody knows Jim, you know, the, the face of KX News forever, right. the face through the flood. I mean, a guy very well respected around town and someone who um, I think everybody would at least say, you know what, this is a guy I should listen to when he has something to say because he's seen a lot of stuff his perspective was that this should not be in law at all. Wow. And, and, and again, it's not to say that, that he or I am right on that, on that specific point. Um, it's, a, it's a perspective again. But when people who have seen a lot and have been here and invest in this community have something to say, I think it behooves us to listen. Right. Um, to at least consider that point of view. And so, you know, that, that matched very well with my perspective on it. Um, and so, yeah, when, when that vote came down, they, they all decided that that was the best way to spin it back up and to get the committee going. Um, in some ways, I was glad that that was the outcome simply because the language that was being proposed um, by Carrie Evans was not one that we could support, uh, you know, right. that, that, that um, my friends and I could support, um, you know, primarily because it was, it was, it was getting very granular about protected classes and, and all mm -hmm. different things. I mean, you know, when you, when you're trying to pick and choose who, um, who can be named in the ordinance as being oppressed, that's actually the problem with the original ordinance is that it did that in the first place when it, when it right. referred to age and sex and things like that. And so when, when you do that, you know, in, in other parts of government, we call it picking winners and losers. Yeah. You know, in this case, it was one of those cases where it said there's a very specific point of view that's being brought forward to say, well, we've got to protect this whole class of people. Um, and, you know, really, at the end of the day, if, if we're going to be doing anything that's meant to be welcoming to, to people that are not from Minot and want have them want to stay here, we've got to be targeting everybody anyway. Right. It's not about these individual classes of people. It's just saying, how do we make the city more a, a great place to live overall? Right. And there's organizations in Minot that do that, right. that are focused mm -hmm. on that, and they probably do a great job at that. So let them continue to do that. So the ordinance would go ahead and pass, it'd be reinstated, um, which gets us to this first meeting that was, well, what actually gets us to the appointments. So each uh, ended up, Scott Burlingham and Lisa Olson would co-chair the committee. Each council person would be able to uh, appoint a member. And so those appointed were Denise Dykeman, Travis Zablotny, Janet Mathestead, Mike Lessam, you, uh, Miranda Schuler, Leanne Zeltinger, and Christine Staley. Um, it was interesting because uh, he, some of them would comment on why there's comments on why. And th the one that stood out to me the most was Travis Blotney's appointment, which was done by Carrie Evans. And her statement was, I appointed someone who I believed needed a better understanding of those who feel marginalized in our community community. And I hope the committee finds a way to hear from those in individuals, which was almost like I'm putting you on this committee so you can learn, which is not the point of the committee at all. Right. And if every council person did that, then seems like it'd be a very ineffective committee. Um, so I thought that was really an interesting thing coming from the appointments, but you finally got to the first meeting on August 15th. Um, 
And immediately there was discussion of whether or not this committee was uh, acting under the law, under the ordinance that was already in place. You were giving some feedback on that. Um, but why was that important to you? And, and do you feel like it was really received? So as we, as we started up, we knew from the last council meeting that they, they hadn't worked under the law. I mean, that was, that was obvious to everybody. I yes. mean, the, the law reads, you know, 20 members, right. um, you know, they should, they should choose their own, uh, chair, vice chair, um, and parliamentarian. There should be a secretary appointed. There was a very clear outline in, in statute or in, in the mm -hmm. ordinance, um, as it read that laid out exactly how this should happen. They ignored all that, um, right. you know, Councilman uh, Pitt, Pittner's motion, valid or not, ignored the law right. flat out. And so as we got into that meeting, we did introductions. Um, very early on, then I brought a point of order um, to ask the, the co-chairs as well as the city attorney whether they believed we were acting under the law. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 think it was, I think it was received okay. I don't, I don't think that that was the issue. I think that they understood that there was a, an issue there. Right. Um, I think the city attorney at one point said, I, I, I can't disagree with what you're saying. Right. Um, and so again, I, I'm not a lawyer. I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. a business owner. I, it's not where I'm at, but I, I, I do have a, a decent amount of knowledge in, in parliamentary authority and in, in meetings and things like that. And so, you know, one of the things that's important to understand is that when you, when you're looking at sort of what can be adjusted in a, in a committee or in a, in, in something that's being formed like that, the, the highest possible authority under Robert's rules, which is the authority that most places use for their meeting, their meetings is the, is, is an actual law. So this is a charter that's laid out in ordinance. So a charter laid out in ordinance can't be adjusted. Okay. It, 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 it just can't, you have to go through the normal reading process. That's why what the council was originally doing with Carrie Evans, bringing it forward that I may have disagreed, but that is the right path. Right. You know, that's what, that's how that should work. Yes. You should bring an ordinance forward. It should go through multiple readings with comment and then vote by the council. So that path is all correct. The motion that, that Alderman Pittner brought, um, really short circuited all that. It, mm -hmm. it just, it just did it completely different. And so, you know, there, I, I think there was a couple people on the panel that, thought that I was splitting hairs and that, you know, right. this, you know, we understand the intent, you know, we don't really, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Right. I, if we're going to, if we're going to be helping craft a new law, my expectation would be if we craft a new law and the city council passes it, that it's going to be followed to the letter. Right. You don't draft laws and then say, well, we'll leave it up to interpretation. I mean, we, we didn't, you know, you'll get our intent. It doesn't right. really matter. That's not how law works. Law is all about the details. It's all about the exact words on the page. Absolutely. And so when we're forming a new committee that's been this contentious, and I believe will be more contentious as time goes by now, because the, the you know, the, the thoughts on this haven't changed. We've no. just moved it down a layer in terms of who's working on it. Right. Um, you know, so with that in mind, we it, this has to be all about the details. It has to be done by the letter of the law and done the exact right way so that at least at the very end, all of us can walk away from it and say, you know what, I maybe didn't get everything I wanted. I maybe didn't get it, it crafted exactly the way I wanted, but I believe in the process. You know, right. it's sort of like what we say about elections. You have yeah. to believe in the process. Right. Otherwise, you're, everybody's going to question the validity coming out the back end. Absolutely. There was a feeling that um, some felt city council wanted this in place. <laughs> it was just a matter of how from your appointment and from your following the entire process, is that what you feel too, that, that this is something city council wants in place, they just want to see how the verbiage should be, or is it something that they're looking more for a community to, to research and see if it's something that it needs to be in place, and if it did need to be in place, what should that verbiage be, or does it need to be in place at all? Right. I, I guess my perspective as the discussion was going on around the, uh, the ordinance originally I, I didn't feel that there was a lot of pushback to say this shouldn't be here. Um, but one of the things I will say is, is that I, I believe that there are, that there are council members that feel more strongly that that is the case, that, mm -hmm. that really this isn't something that has been needed. We, you know, right. I don't, I don't think any of us know of any major discrimination problems around my Right. You know, we've got uh, plenty of stuff to be working on and to make the city better. Um, um, you know, and I, I watched you with the mayor the last few days here. Yeah. I mean, he's got a pretty good handle on where that should go. Right. Um, there's important things, safety wise, other things that we can work on. I don't see this as an issue. And I think mm -hmm. I, I get the sense that there's a little bit of that sentiment on the, on the, 
the, the council as well. Although I think the council members individually are being very careful because they they don't want to alienate no. whole groups of people. I, right. I understand that. That's human nature. That's that's sort of part of being a, a politician. And so I don't blame them for that. I, I don't expect them to just be you know cut and dried you know hardcore with every belief uh, every time that they do it. Um, although older woman Evans is, uh, yeah. you know, she certainly has her perspective and, right. and, and she won't back down from that. And so I felt like the council um, worked pretty diligently to get to a spot where they could deal with something that had been brought forward and do it under terms that they could agree with. And that's really where we're at today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll see. Now, one of the things though, that I will say is very telling um, after we came, after we went through that meeting, and now there was a city council meeting earlier this week where they right. adjusted it based on that, and you know probably where we we're going to head next anyway. But they made some adjustments to it based on the feedback that that I and, and a couple others had brought right. um, to say, you know, this is we need to look at this whether it should be an ad hoc committee or exactly how it should be formed. They actually did reform it as an ad hoc committee. One of the interesting things in the exact verbiage of that set of, I guess it's not ordinance, it's a resolution, I believe, is what they used to okay. do it. So in the resolution, it, it actually does say to determine whether the ordinance should exist and if so, what it should look like. Right. And so in that language, and, and I believe that was you know worked on by, by Alderman Burlingame working with the city attorney, likely maybe the city manager. Um, I appreciate that language because right. I do think that that's a valid question. And it's, it's another one that I started to bring up a couple times in the first meeting. And believe me, that will be brought up again because yeah. that, you know, at the end of the day, as I mentioned in, in my opening on the committee, I'm there because I care very much about the scope of government and about what it does in each of our daily lives and what it should be involved in. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, public public safety and infrastructure and things like that. That all makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Delving into this area where we're, we're heading down a path where we're saying, well, you made somebody feel bad. And as a government, we're going to do something about that. That That's a pretty rough, slippery slope to me. Right. So there's going to be, there'll be some relatively heavy discussion coming around those types of things. So we'll, we'll jump to that city council meeting that happened Um Last Monday, um, some of the things that were were unanimously approved by the council was to declare that there's a moratorium suspending the Human Relations Committee ordinance until December 31st, unless the council repeals or amends the ordinance earlier, which is an interesting point because it goes back to kind of the root of the whole thing. This was in place already. Mm-hmm. It was in the background. It wasn't active, perhaps, but it was still in place and it was part of law. Right. And so they were, all they're wanting to do is rewrite that or get rid of it completely, um, just to make sure that's clear. And then, as you mentioned, establish the ad hoc committee on the community, on the human relations uh, to review the ordinance um, and make a re- recommendation to the city council regarding whether the ordinance should remain in effect, um, confirm the city council's appointments to the committee, um, and then confirm the council members of Burlingham and Lisa Olson as co-chairs, um, which was just a necessary thing with what they were doing there. Um, do you, I know that there was a lot of discussion in that August 15th meeting for the HRC. Um, how do you feel now that the ad hoc committee is in place? How do you feel about that? It, it, was that just the best way forward or how do you feel about it? Yeah, I, in, you know, from my perspective, it alleviated much of the issue that I had brought up. I right. mean, you know, there's, there's no question that the, the mayor and the council can bring an ad hoc committee to study anything they want. Yeah. And that, that is the right way to go about things. And really at the end of the day, that's what I was looking for out of that process was to say, we can't act as the committee as it exists in ordinance right now because mm-hmm. we're not following it. We're not even close to that. If it was rebrought as a as a ad hoc committee, at least it can fit law, and that's really what needed right. to happen. Um, the the moratorium portion of it was an interesting one, and I haven't I haven't thought through every aspect of what that means. It in some ways it's it's pushing on us to make sure we have our work done by the end of the year. Right. Um, at the same time. Well, I guess the way to look at it would be if for whatever reason we don't have our work done by that time, the moratorium would, would expire and the, and it would still exist in ordinance. And so mm-hmm. it's it's really not anything that's binding. It's it's something that I think is more just to set a timeline for the work that we're going to be doing. Right, which is a good thing. Um, but as also we referenced, um, it also brings up the fact that it could be just repealed, taken away completely, deleted. Um which is interesting because some of the feedback from the committee, uh, from the 
HRC committee uh, on the August 15th meeting was that obviously city council wants this to happen. Otherwise we wouldn't be here. So it's not a deal of whether this should be in place or not. It's a deal of let's just get to work and get it figured out and get it done. Um, which was an interesting comment to me because I don't think anybody on that committee was trying to get away from getting work done. They were just trying to make sure that the work that they did was legal. Right. Um, so, um, do you, do you feel like that's going to change the discussion points going into the next meeting of finally we're able to talk about the legitimacy of this ordinance being in place? Or do we feel like we are just going to go through the six issues that you guys uh, find? Or, or, or how, how do you think that's going to go? Well, I guess I, I, part of what I'm going to be intending to do on the committee is to make sure those discussions are happening. Right. Um, to me, this isn't as simple as going through the list and determining if we've got the right list of oppressed groups. That, yeah. that, that to me is of actually very little interest at this point in the process in particular. Um, you know, part of, the, part of what we need to work our way through is something that the city manager brought up, which is, you know, are we intending to be a human rights commission or a human relations commission? Mm -hmm. um, and his distinction that he made in that is that in, in the cases where human rights commissions are in place, a lot of times they have... They have investigative powers. They have the ability to actually bring sanctions or to recommend sa sanctions if something's brought. Uh, brought. They have a grievance process. Um, you know, the curtain ordinance actually has a grievance process, and it allows follow-up by the committee and recommendations to be made. It's all in curtain ordinance. Um, but I think I think his take on it was is that that's not at all what's needed for our city. Right. We, you know, the, the grievance side of things, the, the 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 portions that say this is something that's illegal or something that needs to be acted on have to be with the, the proper authorities. I mean, right. you know, discrimination is, is illegal under federal law. It's illegal under state law. Mm -hmm. um, adding another layer with Minot um, isn't going to change the fact that it's illegal under those, and, and that's your better recourse in the first place. Right. And so, you know, I, I think those questions are still what need to be addressed, and we still need to talk through that. And so as we, start, as we go to start up, those, I believe, will be some of the discussions that we're going to have. Now, what, what happened during that meeting is they tried to put a process in place now as well where they're trying to lay out which topics we're going to talk about when. Right. Um, which, to me, just got into minutia. You know, I, I can follow things. I've been a part of committees. I, I, yeah. I know how things like that work. At the same time, it seemed to be bringing complication where it didn't need to be. Right. Um, you know, starting to mix around which topics we're talking about when. And I understand it. It's, it's for a good reason. It's because we want to make sure that if there's people in the community that want to come and bring feedback, that they know when to come and all that. But we always have to notice the meetings. There's always going to be agendas put out. And so I think I don't think that that's that big a deal. I think we could have worked through the ordinance top to bottom, and that's actually the motion that, that I made was to, to just move through it you know, right on through. Um, part of that was that I feel like we need to do some of the big questions first to determine what even is this? Does it need right. to exist? Like, you know, what is it trying to accomplish? And then once we've determined that, if it is going to be something that we want, then how do we structure it? Because mm -hmm. depending upon what our duties are, what the committee's duties are going forward, we don't know if it needs 20 people or five. You know, right. there's no good way to know that. And unfortunately, the path that I think it looks like we're going down now, we may answer some of the how questions before we know why. Yeah, And that to me, isn't perfect. It doesn't mean we couldn't revisit something, but, um, to it me, can make it, it longer. Means, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole, the whole question is we may spin our wheels a little bit and, and maybe that's okay. I mean, that's maybe the part of the deliberation in the process at the same time. I think we, we have to answer these big questions. You know, I think right. the reason, the reason why this is a question for the community is not around the makeup of the com committee and the little minutia of what's going on. It's overall, is this the role of government? Right. That's the question that people have on the street. And so with that in mind, I think we have to answer those questions first, right. but we'll it, get there. Is it the role of government? So, so what do you see as it's, this is going to be a difficult question for you to answer and some concerns because you, you won't be able to speak for everybody else, but, but what do you see as really the goal? What, what are you trying to work towards? I guess it's difficult to say what the entire committee is trying to work for, but what are you trying to work for? Well, I guess I'll, I'll put it in tears because it, if we were given my way today, we'd go back and just repeal it. Yeah. The ordinance doesn't need to be in law. As Jim Olson said, it just doesn't need to be there. This isn't the role of government. Right. You know, it's the role of every one of us as residents of the city mm -hmm. to make it welcoming. 
it is the role of the city in terms of, hey, let's make it look good. Let's make sure that, you know, the ditches aren't full of trash. Let's make sure that things are groomed and looking nice so that it's a pleasant place to be. But in terms of, of someone coming forward and saying, I feel uncomfortable in downtown because I am a member of this group. Mm-hmm. I don't know how government solves that. Yeah. I, you know, short of somebody saying I walked in here and was refused service, or I walked in here to get an apartment and I was refused because of X, Y, and Z. I don't know how we make somebody feel comfortable walking down main street simply mm-hmm. because they're a member of an oppressed group. Right. Um, that's not to say it doesn't matter. It, it's mm-hmm. not to say that anybody walking down Main Street should be made to feel uncomfortable or not safe or whatever that is. But using the force of government to figure out which business is causing that and, you know, do they, do they not have the right stuff in their front window? What yeah. actually is that? Mm-hmm. And so that to me would be number one. I, I'd like to see it repealed. I don't think it needs to be there. If you make the assumption that that's not going to fly and that we're going to need to have something, then what I'll be working towards next is is really um, you know what the city manager was saying. This, if we're going to have a committee, let's focus it around things that are not meant to be sanctions. It's not a grievance process. It's not just a sounding board for everybody, everything that everybody wants to complain about. But it truly is about the things. As he gave as a great example, you know. Ukrainians that are here now are going to be working in the oil fields that, that we've worked on that immigration. They're going to be around. Um, you know, what does that mean to be Ukrainian coming to mine? Right. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what that means is, you know, I, I, is there, is there things that we could do um, to make them feel welcome? I think individually there is, right. you know, if, you know, for me as a business owner, if they walk into my business, I might recognize that, Hey, you're from a different part of the world. We, right. we handle things a little bit differently here. Let me talk to you about that. Right. That one-on-one is what makes this city great. It's yeah. not an ordinance and a top down solution that says you will. Right. That that's really what I want to see. So I'd like to see us keep it as a human relations committee. I'd love to see us just simplify the language around who we're meant to serve. Right now, there's a list in ordinance that lays out the main um, anti-discrimination groups. You know, it's it's age, it's national origin, it's it's sex, all those pieces. I'd love to see us fo- focus there and just say, for all people. I mean, right. really, we're we should exist if we're going to to make it to make it work for everybody. You know, I've spent some time studying the particularly the Fargo um, Human Relations Committee. Yes, because theirs is in operation. They they have monthly meetings that are te- that are televised on online. Um, and so I've gone back and taken a look at it. Some of the some of the presentations that they've had, I would go, uh, I you know I don't see it as useful. But others have been interesting. You know, right. they they did have one from a, uh, um, you know, from I think it's called maybe the High Plains Res- Resource Center, something along those lines. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's a it's a housing um, group that's making sure that people are not discriminating when it terms in terms of housing, okay. making sure that somebody that wants a, an apartment is able to get it and they're not being discriminated against for whatever reason. Right. And so I think there's things that are good there. Now, whether that needs to occur in a HRC right, or whether the council could have them presenting directly to them, I'm not sure. I right. don't know what the right answer is for yeah. that. Yeah, it sounds like some of the rule <laughs> of what the HRC would be messing with, you know, you talk about the Ukrainians migrating in is, is what some of the chamber and EDC is trying to do with some of their uh, programs that they have to help people transition uh, easily to Minot and to the new community, try to get them connected to people and stuff like that, which is what you would need in order for that success to successfully happen. Right. So it is unique for the role of government to then step in and try to say, Hey, we're going to create our own program, which isn't as much of a program as it is an ordinance um, that it's going to happen this way. Well, so. I think I think the hard part about that is that I feel like this ordinance, particularly the way it went through the council this time, is starting from the opposite point. It's starting from a point that there's somebody who's being wronged, yeah, and it's saying, "How do we figure out what to do about that and make sure that they're not wronged anymore?" Right. And I I, I just I, I don't agree. I mean, right. if if those things were occurring, if they are occurring, they need to be going to the proper authorities to make right. sure that they're being taken care of because these are illegal under federal law, I, including. LGBTQ issues, which um, federal courts have been siding with them mm-hmm. and saying that that they are covered under sex under the current law, and yeah. so there's recourse. And if those things are occurring, they need to avail themselves of those resources and right. head that direction. The the city itself should not be in that business. Yeah, very good. The next meeting is coming up on August 29th. Is yes. that correct? All right. So that's something that we can 
follow along. It will be streamed on the City of Minot's YouTube page. Uh, if anyone is interested in continuing to track the HRC ordinance and now the Ad Hoc Human Relations Committee. Anything that you'd like to add, Mike? No, you know, I think one of the things that I do think is interesting, we didn't go a lot into the um, the selection of members. You, you did mm-hmm. mention Travis and and sort of the way that that occurred. Um, very yeah. strange. Right. I, I mean, really. Um, but but the other thing that I would say, you know, the mayor chose me um, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. I, you right. know, I don't know him that well, but I think he knew enough of me and, and had seen me, um, knew that I was interested in, in what was going on. Um, you know, I was very frank with him when we talked on the phone when he was right. talking about appointing me, and I let him know that that I, I this isn't a process that I believe government should be involved in, and I let him know that, and he right. and he said I, I would like you to be a part of this because I think we need people to bring different perspectives. Right. Um, I think part of the other thing that's being that's been talked about a little bit is that people have said there isn't diversity on the committee. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing, I actually think there's a lot of diversity if you think of it as diversity of thought, mm-hmm. because we do have people such as myself, um, you know, Travis would certainly be along those lines as well, um, who look at this more skeptically. Mm-hmm. If we had appointed a full committee of people who just full blown said, yes, there are, there are major problems that we have in this area. We need to work on this. We need to get a, get this done and get an anti-discrimination ordinance put in place. I don't believe we would have had the diversity of thought that we have around oh, mine. Right. Yeah. And, and w- who, the people that were showing up for the council meetings to voice their concerns about this, some of it was on, you know, they would have spiritual grounds that they were bringing some of it, you know, like in my case, this was much more about what's the role of government and, yeah. and where does that go? There's a lot of different perspectives and I think it is important. And I, I believe the committee has that. I, I think that we have, we have a diverse group in terms of thought, Versus this, there are some that are just flat out saying this is the best way to go. We're behind the times and need to catch up. While there's others of us saying, not the business of the city. Right. So yeah. Let's stick to roads. Let's stick to public safety and those types of things. So, right. So yeah, I think I think it's going to be interesting. I, I yeah. you know I, I I I'd be lying if I said I'm looking forward to it <laughs> because it's it, it's just not going to be fun. It's right. not going to be an enjoyable process. But we will. I believe all of us on the panel will do our best to do right by the city. Right. And to do the best we can for the city. I believe that. Yeah, about the only thing that went great at that first meeting, in my opinion, was you guys stuck to the 90-minute rule that was in place. <laughs> yeah. Came in a little under. Yeah, thing, exactly. So, yeah. so exactly. that part was a success. So, well, we look forward to the meeting on August 29th. Um, it'll be interesting for sure. Thank you for taking time coming on My Not Matters. Appreciate that. Appreciate your viewpoints. Um, and thank you to all for watching this episode of My Not Matters. Be sure to, to subscribe to The Decoded on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and stay tuned for more great content. Thank you.